be together this morning uh, to uh, start a new study together. Uh, God, we pray that you'd be with us as we go through these three short letters from John. Uh, God, we thank you that these have been preserved for us over uh, uh, thousands of years uh, so that we can learn uh, just as our first century brothers and sisters did. Uh, God, we pray that you just be with our time together, and uh, thank you for allowing us to start our Tuesday uh, like this. We love you. It is in your sense that we pray. Amen. Amen. I do want to say this. Um, I had, Gary and I had care group last night, and then at seven o'clock, I flipped over to a um, finance board meeting, and it's 40 minutes into the finance board meeting, it shut us down. So that's the first time that I've been using Zoom that they haven't extended uh, the, the, the 40 minute. Uh, we were trying not to buy the extended version or upgraded version or anything. So if uh, we get uh, kicked off of here, I'll close the room. And if we're not done, uh, we'll, we can start it right back up again. So, uh, but uh, that first time that's happened to us um, uh, in all the Zoom meetings that I've had. So who knows if it'll happen this morning, uh, but if it does, we'll just go back to that link and we'll start it right back up. So, all right. So first, second, third, John, your homework last week uh, was to... Um, do the research uh, that we typically do when we start a new study, uh, looking at things like the author, uh, maybe the date, uh, the, the purpose, the occasion uh, of writing this, uh, any, any interesting facts uh, that um, uh, we may have, may have uncovered about, these, about this study. So uh, by interesting fact, I mean like, like the book of James, Martin Luther referred to it as an epistle of straw. Uh, he didn't. He really didn't think that it believed it belonged in the canon of scripture so much. Uh, so, um, luckily, a lot of people disagreed with him, uh, and he didn't make that decision. Uh, so, James is in scripture. So, so let's start uh, with John, and let's just start with the author. Um, what did you guys find out when you read about the authorship uh, of John? Well, he, he he never refers to himself as as John. Uh, he refers himself as an elder, but the writing seemed to be similar or exactly alike through first, second, and third. So every, most everybody's in agreement that John had written uh, the epistles. A few other comments out there that it wasn't written, but that's a little bit off the off the side right john the apostle right yeah yeah i guess i didn't i didn't realize until looking at it that there was a lot of that there was really any debate that it was you know john son of zebedee you know author of the fourth gospel so that was kind of interesting to me um i don't know i think bible i think bible scholars like to come up with different people that wrote you know, stuff. So like the three different Isaiah's that wrote Isaiah, that's one, if you want to look into it, it's kind of interesting, but, uh, and the, yeah. like the, thing that, the, the thing that caught me with that bread is that that didn't come on until like more recently. Like, yes. like it wasn't people thousands of years ago debating who wrote it. It was people in the last, <laughs> in the last yeah. century who started debate that, that it was maybe somebody else. Well, that's kind of our society, right? You know, thousands of years of tradition and, world working the way that it does and we're right and if you're going to change and be right right now you know, so. uh, he'd also write revelation yeah and the gospel john and the gospel right. so so john has has five five books five letter or five books and or letters uh, to his name uh in, in the new testament um what did you find about when it was written? I think, if I'm not mistaken, 65 AD, Revelation. I had 85 to 95. That's when Revelations was written, I thought, the Re Revelation. Uh, that may be. Uh, my math may be wrong on that. Or what well, I I've got first first John written uh, in the 80s. Yeah. 
late in John's life. Yeah, it, it really can't probably be written any later than like 90 um, because some of like your early church fathers um, reference First John in their writing, which isn't canon, but it's church, you know, teaching and history. Um, and they reference that. So that it probably can't be before 90. Um, okay. Yeah, here's another note I have, which Tom already said, uh, around 90 to 95 AD. Yeah, and I think I think uh, history, uh, that other first century hist historical documents, place John in Ephesus uh, around that, that late 80s, early 90s. Right. Uh, that's one of the, the tools that they used for, for, for dating it in, the, in the, the late first century. So I think we're pretty safe in saying the latter half of the first century uh, 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 is written. So um, that makes them 120 years old? Uh, no, it would make them 60-ish years old. I think he was born what 15 AD maybe he was 80 years old when uh, these were written roughly oh, do you did you guys read anything about the order are these necessarily uh, in order first second third John no I mean I didn't find that they were uh, written one two three it seems like maybe they were written all at one time. They were more or less addressed to three different people, carried by one courier. From what I've read. I, I didn't see anything about that, except that they were probably written to different groups of Christians. Right. Greek Christians. Yeah, I think one was maybe just a sermon for First John was a sermon for like general distribution. Uh, Second John was more to be read to a particular church, and then Third John was to Gaius, his friend. Yeah, and I had the first was written to combat fast false teachers concerning the person and work of uh, Jesus Christ. Second was uh, warn the believers about false teachers and the last was uh, to command encourage and instruct his, his good friends and I, I would agree with that that i think these were written fairly close to each other um and i think and i think that they could be uh exactly what what was said that one is for a general purpose a general teaching and then they just get narrower and narrower uh, in their focus uh, between second and third john so the Apostle John, um, written late first century, um, not necessarily written in order, but close to each other uh, and uh, for uh, narrowing focuses uh, on, on that. Uh, so um, was there any other interesting facts uh, or tidbits you found uh, about these letters uh, as you were reading through things? <laughs> Let me ask you guys this while you're while you're looking through your 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 scribbles and your notes and stuff, um, Gary. Where do you go? Like when we start a new study, where do you typically go to do your background uh, search stuff? This one source uh, it's called Dating the New Testament. It, it has all the books of the Bible, and you click on that, and it gives an outline and a, a bunch of things. First thing I get to do is the uh, commentary on my Bible and, and read through that. Then I get to other sources. I don't have another book that, that okay. I get to. So I look most of it online. Uh, uh, anybody else? Where, where do you guys go uh, when you're doing research for uh, to start a study? My Bible. Bible. My Bible's a study Bible, Bible, and I just uh, 
uh, it, it has notations and different uh, tidbits uh, along the te beside the text. Um, and I think uh, I did, uh, I think I even Googled John. And uh, as you can imagine, that you had to watch what, what came up and, yeah. and what was accurate. And, and you could pretty much tell what was, uh, you know. But normally I just, you know, don't go too much past uh, what, what's in my Bible and what's in the, in the study part of it. Tony, I use the uh, ESV study Bible a lot that you bought me several years ago. Uh, as my primary source. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh, ESV Study Bible is great. Um, it has phenomenal notes. So I, I like that. I mean, I have a lot of commentaries and stuff too um, that I'll that I'll look at occasionally as well, depending on how deep I'm trying to get into it beforehand. Yeah, I have I have a couple of different study Bibles. I do like the ESV one the best. I think it has the most information, uh, the most thorough. Uh, and, but then I have like a, I have steps of commentaries that I'll go to. Like I have a, a set of uh, New Testament InterVarsity Press commentaries. Uh, and it's more like reading a novel than it is reading a, a commentary. Yeah, so I start there. Uh, and then I really like, I know John Stott has a, a commentary series out, uh, The Message. Uh, of John, this one's John's letters. Uh, it's like a middle of the road commentary. And then, if I when I want to go deeper, I have an expositor's commentary uh, that that really tears down each each verse. And if I'm doing a if there's something that's um, really rough uh, and tough, you're trying to to dig down into get what the meaning is. That's where I'll go to. Um, I don't know if you guys use this or not, but there's a great free online tool uh, called BibleHub.com. And uh, it is, uh, it's, it's uh, what it does is put in the scripture that you want to study. Uh, and then uh, you can look at it section by section. And right above it, you have uh, different versions that you can choose from. There's a thing there called an interlinear, uh, which shows you the, 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 the English and then either the Greek or the Hebrew uh, right above it. Uh, not that I can read that, but what's neat about it is it has like the strongest concordance and you can do word studies uh, with it real quick just by hovering over you can find out what he means by when it says peter do you love me you can hover over love and it will show you uh, what what uh, translation of love that should be uh, so it's a real neat free bible study tool uh, honestly it's my the first thing i pull up on the computer if i'm looking is biblehub.com just because it's it's uh, has a lot of different features you can also has a lot of different commentaries uh that, that you can look at uh different word study stuff so it's really pretty neat, uh, and it's really, really good for the price. Um, I, I use, I, I just got started with it, the NIV, and i just curious, who writes uh, the commentaries in the different, the different translations? Does uh, it depend on who's publishing the, the particular Bible? Yeah. Um, for instance, Brett Scott and I went to a conference a while, uh, several years ago now, uh, the gospel or the together for the gospel. And they gave us a Bible called the gospel trans, uh, transformation Bible. So all the commentary in it is written by guys who are associated with that. Um, so you probably see in the front of the Bible, uh, a list of the commentators in it and, and who have worked on it. Um, yeah, cause each one's different. I have a, I have a Charles Spurgeon study Bible that all the notes in it are from him. Uh, so it really just depends on who writes it and who's, in, who's with that. Okay. Yeah, there's usually a team like, you know, so you get like, obviously like when the ESV was done, it was, you know, there were hundreds of people translating it, you know, from the Greek. And then, yeah, it's usually kind of the same process for like a study Bible. Um, you know, you get a team of people together who are, you know, giving information about stuff, you know, from their, from their perspective. Is the ESV a more recent translation than yeah. the NIV? Uh, the original NIV, yes. Yeah, the original okay. NIV, I think, was done, what, in 84? And I think redone in 2013. ESV was early 2000s, right? I mean... 
I believe. I don't think it was in the 90s. 2001 is yeah. the one I have. So, so in, the reason that I like the ESV uh, is it sort of takes the best of both worlds a, a lot. I think it, uh, whether it's word for word or phrase by phrase, it, 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 it uses both of those so that it will get at the, the truest, what they believe is the truest meaning of scripture. Uh, it's a little chunky to read sometimes, a little blocky to read, especially if you're reading out loud. Uh, but I think, I think it gives a very, a very true uh, uh, translation. Uh, let's go. As you look, so date, author, interesting facts. Anybody find any interesting facts? Uh, seems like from what I've read here that John is responding a lot to mysticism or Gnosticism. Gnosticism, yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially in First John. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, the, uh, that's something that we'll talk about quite a bit as we read through these and how he's combating the Gnostic uh, at that time. Uh, and, uh, I had, I just found a couple of interesting quotes. One's from Augustine. Uh, he said, this book is very sweet to every healthy Christian heart that savors the bread of God. Uh, and it should constantly be in the mind of, the, of God's holy church. Uh, so uh, a very early Christian voice. And then I'd never heard of Martin Hingle before, uh, but he referred to, to John as, uh, in 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, as the voice of a towering theologian. Um, so you see a lot uh, of, of theology, uh, deep theology in these three letters. So with that, what, are the, what did you come across as the themes uh, or the purposes uh, of these letters? Uh, past, the, the one's a sermon, one's more directed, and the last one is even more directed. So what themes do we sort of pick up uh, in these short letters? Well, what, what I, how I answered at the beginning may have been the wrong answer, but as far as purpose, what I had is First John was written to combat false teaching concerning the person and work of Jesus Christ. In the second, uh, the apostle wrote to warn believers about false teachers. And the third was uh, wrote to commend, encourage, and instruct his good friend, Galatius or Gautius. The commentary kind of pointed out three basics. Uh, one was true doctrine, uh, two was obedient living, and three was uh, fervent devotion. Yeah, the, one that, the ones that I had were almost synonymous with that. One was doctrinal fidelity, uh, especially around Jesus, uh, that you need to believe and write about Jesus, uh, then obedience, and then instead of fervent devotion, uh, uh, the expositor's commentary talked about uh, the idea of uh, love um, and how all those are tied together. Well, you can't love God without loving his people and his commands. Uh, so uh, that's sort of a common, common find there. Good morning, Mr. McClure. How are you doing? Well, it seemed in all of it that he's stressing that they stick to the basics, stick to what they learned originally, uh, that, that Jesus was, was true man, and, and the most important commandment is still to love one another and love him. Yes. It's like, uh, it's like, he took his gospel, John, and this is, this is sort of like the practical living side of the truths that he taught in that gospel. Uh, it has uh, it, its specific pastoral situations. You see the teachings of the gospel of John now, now given out in this, uh, in first John's the biggest in, in a bigger context than first John and then a narrowing one. So uh, 
uh, where we were studying James, it was uh, sort of the Proverbs and the, the, the Sermon on the Mount uh, with pastoral care under, slid underneath of it. Uh, I think we could say the same thing about, about these uh, letters from John, uh, that, they, they're, that their truth with uh, pastoral care in specific situations slid underneath of them. I, it seems clear that it's it's written by John just in the way the way he uses the words, uh, kind of abstract and poetic almost at times. Yeah, I would agree, and I think I think just that those were more recent attempts to <laughs> to point to another author outside of John is just a, to be an exercise in futility. Uh, I think there's too much evidence uh, going the other direction. It seems like he doesn't spend a whole lot of time on a particular subject. He kind of wanders from subject to subject, but then he comes back in full circle. And, and, and the commentator even said it's more of a circular line of thought. A lot was gone. Yeah, and I think if, if, when you look at that even more, this was one of the harder sections of scripture for those who divided up verse, uh, book, chapter, verse to go in and divide because. Uh, John doesn't follow, like, here's, he doesn't write a paragraph the way that right. the topic sentence and in supporting sentences he, he, he does. It's very cyclical. And so it'll be interesting as we go through, because we'll do a lot of jumping back and jumping forward as we talk about things uh, because of the, the way he wrote it. That's what I wondered how they um, uh, really tried to, you know, how they figured out just you know, the order of the books, how they were written and when they were written. And and, and in what order. Yeah. So there's I think as we get, look through John's letters, we're going to find four of those topics, uh, th areas of theology uh, that John touches on. Uh, and so, like again, there's, there's main themes of obedience and of Jesus and of, of, of correct thinking about Jesus, correct theology or doctrine, uh, and then uh, keeping his, his law or his rule. Um, I think there's four areas of, of theology that we'll see also. Uh, we'll learn a lot about God through these three, three letters. Uh, we'll learn a lot about that process of sanctification, of, of us being transformed daily into a better image of Jesus. Um, we'll, we'll learn a lot about the ecclesiology uh, or the doctrine of the church uh, through these uh, three, three letters. And then also an underlying theme, theme is a pastoral care uh, that we'll see a lot of how we should care for each other uh, uh, through through these letters. Um, so let me, let me throw this question out to you. As you've done a little bit of reading and if you've done a lot of research, what questions are you hoping that this study answers for you? I, I, I guess I didn't have any thought in that direction, so I uh, don't have a thought. Or let me put, I'll, I'll phrase it another way. Uh, what do you hope to gain out of this, this, the study of these three letters? It's quite often when we read a book or a passage or a paragraph and reread it again months later, years later, that we get a totally different meaning out of it. So just a better understanding and, and quite often in a group setting like this and uh, always pick up things that uh, didn't see uh, didn't see it the way, way I read it uh, so it brings out different points that uh, just for a better understanding well I've always liked 
the way John refers to to uh, truth as light, and and I I like seeing that that he continues that theme. I hadn't hadn't remembered that, but um, the, the the continuous references to you know, walking in the light and 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 truth being being light and um, evil being darkness and uh, and his emphasis on love and anyone who hates his brother is still in darkness i want to i want to watch how how john interacts with this false teaching that's prevalent um it, it was obviously something that he uh that the spirit wanted him to write about uh and I think it's something that we need to pay attention to today as well, uh, because uh, it's it's pretty easy to go to online uh, to go uh, listen to other other teachings, uh, and for us to 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 find false teaching or incomplete teaching about about scripture about God. And I think it's important for us to be ready to to combat that uh, in uh, with uh, varying degrees of forcefulness uh, depending on the situation. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested just to see how he deals with the, these false teaching and how, how he calls, calls that out and how he redirects um, uh, the, those who are maybe uh, in danger of falling victim to that false teaching. I have a question. This is the same John that was at the cross, right? Was it, you know, one of his favorite three? Well, it was Peter, he's, James, and John. He's the beloved. Uh, yeah. Yes. Was he's he the, the one that was at the cross that Jesus said, "This is your mother now." Right. Yeah. Same so one. How old would he have been at the cross? Oh, uh, well, he spent <laughs> three years with Jesus, so at least three. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well, he was pretty young, right? I mean, he had to have been awful young. Yeah, uh, because it, Brett, you said something at the beginning about, uh, or somebody said about how about his age at the beginning. Yeah, I, I, I was questioning. I, I did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if this was written um, in the, the late <laughs> 80s, um, I would, and, and Jim, how old did you say? What age did well, you I I was mistakenly uh, going from eighty five A D to to thinking that was after the death eighty five right. years Jesus after died the death in thirty three A D. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're right. only talking okay. fifty years after his yeah. death. Right. Really. Yeah. So John, if John's say twenty, right. when Jesus dies, yeah, he's probably he's in his eighties or nineties. So, yeah. you know, he's in his probably 80s when this is written, you know, yeah. or, or late 70s, and he's probably in his 90s when Revelation is written. Right. Right. Yeah. That sounds about right. Well, one reference said that he was possibly related to Jesus, being a, a cousin. Right. Uh, with, with his mother Mary being the sister of Salome. Right. Yes. I, I, yeah, I don't know if there's any basis for that, but yeah. that would make him pretty contemporary with Jesus, I guess, in age. Yeah, I, I just found that out or heard about that last week when I was doing my study through John. I never heard that, and I saw a lot of just different research into it. Wait, so never heard what? That John was the cousin of Jesus. Mm. Or some people speculate that he was the cousin of Jesus. It's kind of like debated. Because the, the, I think the his mother being Salome or Salome was mentioned in Mark. I believe, but it's not mentioned anywhere else. So it's kind of like a loose, but yeah, that would, that would make him, that also explains the special relationship that he had with Jesus because he's right. even closer than everybody else. Yeah, I think I've always thought it was funny that I thought it was always sort of proof that the, uh, that the, writers of the gospel didn't have the other uh, authors proofread their stuff or the other apostles proofread their stuff because I'm pretty sure if Peter would have read it, he would have made him change all the times he referred to himself as the beloved uh, to, to something else. Uh, uh, but hey, when you're directed by the Holy Spirit to 
to refer to yourself in that way, go with it. All right. Well, any um, any other thoughts uh, on uh, introductory thoughts on John? I I don't have any more thoughts, but just a question. Backing up, when do you think he was born? Where? When? Oh. Uh, I'd say within 10, 12 years of Jesus. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I, I would I would say he's probably younger than younger than Jesus, uh, but that's just just spe right speculation. Yeah. So he yeah like I think common kind of thought is he's like a late teen, you know maybe like eighteen to twenty or something, right when he does ministry with Jesus, like by the time. Yeah, I mean he's definitely probably one of the younger. Um, younger apostles. Um, you think about it, his brother would have been even younger, right? We didn't wasn't wasn't his brother wasn't John, John the oldest of the two? Well, that off the top of my head, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, James, James was his brother, right? Mm -hmm. Son of Zebedee. I can't remember. Sorry. Just curious. Uh, well, as we as we read this, as we study it, uh, there's some connections with the rest of Scripture. Um, the again, the the teachings found in particular in, in these in the Gospel of John, uh, we see now sort of played out uh, with some to some specific situations uh, that uh, that the early church is dealing with, early Christians are dealing with. Um, the, uh, these these tie us into some of the key teachings about the person of Jesus, uh, which is one of the themes that we need to believe correctly about Jesus uh, in order to teach about him and to live for him. Uh, so we will see that uh, a lot. Uh, and then a final thing for us to pay attention to, that this idea of uh, our, our ethics or Christian ethics and Christian doctrine are inseparable, uh, that one is built, one is tied, on, tied to the other. Uh, so as we go through uh, we will see this uh, again. Um, so and it'll it'll be rough uh, because there'll be there may be some times as we're reading through. Now again, we're not talking about a, a lengthy uh, a lengthy uh, letter, but there may be some times where our reading is going to be a little wonky. Instead of reading, hey, we're going to chapter one uh, for next week. Chapter enough for them to to break up the chapters. There may be some times where we where we lengthen or shorten. Uh, what we're going to read just to try to keep some of that those commonalities uh, together. Um, but for, for next week, uh, you have all of 10 verses uh, to digest uh, and uh, uh, to read into uh, the introductory um, and uh, uh, just uh, talking about, uh, as Jim brought out a few seconds ago, this idea of light. If you'll notice, Second and third John uh, start with uh, a greeting, uh, sort of the traditional way uh, to start a letter. Uh, and first, but first John does not uh, just jump right in. Uh, so again, I think it's uh, Gary or Dad who said that uh, this first one is sort of a sermon, a, a treaty for for a larger group, uh, and so this sort of sort of fits that mold uh, because there's not while it is still a letter uh, it's to a broader audience uh, maybe multiple churches uh, and it, it jumps right in uh, to the meat of the 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 the, the message uh, so um, so anything else first second third John all right well I am going to hit stop on the recording.